Now that we've got our balloon all pressed down with the clouds, it's time to pick our threads to finish all the raw edges. Fusible web is just a temporary adhesive. This will pop up if you don't stitch it down. And I'm gonna use a blanket stitch on all the edges. And I'm gonna show you that over at the sewing machine. But first up, we need to pick our threads. I like to have them all picked and over there so I can just keep going as I sew. So, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, the clouds on this white are both kind of like a pearly white. They're not a bright white. So it's toss up between using cream or this soft dove gray to finish the edges. See the cream looks a little better over there, but it's much brighter than this and the gray just sort of disappears. So I think, I think we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and use pearl gray to do the clouds in the white part of the balloon. So no cream. Then we're gonna use this um, color 5002. It's like a corally red. It blends with all of the colors in the, quil in the quilt top, including this rusty reddish here. And then I will also use it, um, actually I will not use it. I'm gonna use it on the balloons, on the bottom of the balloon. Then I'm gonna use chocolate brown. And we're gonna use chocolate brown to do the threads the strings that hold the basket to the balloon. And then while I have it, um, I will also do the basket in the rim. So we're only gonna use three colors this time. That for here, that for the colors, and that for the neutrals. So I'm gonna get, get it all set up and bring it over to the sewing machine, and then I'm gonna show you how I do the blanket stitch, and then how I do the machine stitch that makes it look like it's hand embroidered. So I'll see you over there. We're over here at the machine. We're getting ready to do the stitching on the edges of our applique for the balloon and the clouds. And I wanna show you the foot that you're gonna to need to use. It's, this is an open toe foot. This is my Bernina foot. It's a 20 foot. Every machine has a different number, but it's an open toe foot and it has got no bar, no plastic. It is just open so that when I put this on here to sew, I don't have anything in the obstructing my view of this needle sewing into my fabric. So you need to make sure you put an open toe foot on your machine. If you have needle position, make sure it's in the center of your center position. And if you have needle down, make sure you put needle down feature on. And the needle down feature means that every time you stop, the needle is in the down position into the fabric. And I'll show you when we start stitching why that's so important. Um, so I've loaded up the pearl gray, and we're going to do all of the clouds and the cream on the balloon first. And so we're going to get this over here, and this is a much bigger piece. Um, it's not like a little 12 inch square, so you will need to fold it up or roll it out of your way as you're working on it. And I'm going to show you how I do that here. So I take it and I just sort of roll it up into a tube like this, and then I just start at one end and I unroll it as I go work through the balloon, and then I roll up the other end. Now that's gonna be important when I do all the clouds. When you're doing the actual balloon, it's gonna be open most of the way to get see the whole balloon. But we're gonna start on a cloud so you can see the, how we do this. Um, and bear with me, I got lights and cameras everywhere here. I'm also going to fold this up this way. So we have it rolled in two directions just so I can um, manipulate it. So on your foot, there is a center line. That center line should go on the edge of your fabric and a blanket stitch does a straight stitch. It bites in a straight and it bite a straight and a bite. And you just want that straight, that center line of the foot to ride along the edge of your fabric. The straight part goes into the background. The bite goes into the applique. So um, I always say, if you don't do this a lot, you're gonna need to warm up each time you're ready to do it. I recommend you cut hearts or stars or circles and iron them down on fabric and just have little scrap ones by your machine. And before you do your quilt, you just practice on a couple of those to get the feel for it, make sure your stitch is right. Um, it's a whole lot easier than having to tear out blanket stitching. So first thing I do is I put my foot down, I align the center of the foot with the center of the fabric, I drop the needle down and I bring my bobbin thread up I have an older machine, so I don't get to push a button and do it, but a lot of the newer machines will do that for you. We just tuck those threads down around out of my way. Um, I try to do that step as a rule of thumb as you watch me do this, so you'll see me just forget to do it. It's not 
like in stone you have to do it. It just helps get those threads out of your way and it's a good practice to be in. Then we're going to just start our start with the needle down and that means I can move the fabric and the needle will help me hold it in place. So needle down and then we're just going to start stitching and because I'm going to come all the way back around I'm just going to go over my first stitch with my last stitch and then do a reverse and that will lock all my stitches in place. If you're not going to go all the way around some machines have a knot feature so you can hit the knot feature and it'll make a little knot for you. Um, you can back stitch do a stitch, back stitch, and then continue on. Um, those are several ways you could just lock your stitches in place. So we're just gonna get started. I always try to start on a nice open stretch, a nice, you know, it doesn't have a lot of curves and divots. It's just fairly eat gentle, just to warm up to make sure I've got everything right. And then as you get to a curve, as we get to this curve, I'm going to stop with my needle down because again that holds it in place for me and I'm going to just lift my presser foot and turn it and I got two stitches before I have to do it again and that is the key to blanket stitching is to move your presser foot and ro rotate the fabrics as needed so you'll see me do it here And these clouds are perfect to really kind of practice on. The balloon is really easy. The clouds are the ones that are going to be a little more challenging. So here we have a, a hard bend. So we stop, lift, turn, drop my foot down again, and rotate. And you can see the quilt, its top is all rolled up here so I can maneuver it around and under the machine and not deal with the bulk of it. It takes a little getting used to um, when you have a bigger piece like this, but um, it, it's definitely doable once you've done a couple of them. Then we're just going to pivot again. I also have a couple cameras and lights going, so if you see me like fighting with it a little bit, it's because I'm bumping into equipment that you don't, you shouldn't have at your machine that I happen to have right now. I do want to get closer to the end. I just clip those off and get them out of my way. And then I just go over my first stitch in reverse. And there, then we just clip our threads. And that's how you do your blanket stitch. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the balloons in the cloud and then when I'm ready to do the strings, I will show you how to do those. So we have all our blanket stitching done, um, but we got all that done. Now we need to do these strings from the balloon that we're going to do with brown. Um, and what we're going to use is a stitch on my machine. Let me bring you over here. We're going to use this stitch right here, the, the three lines, stitch six. And we're going to take the stitch width down to just under one. I'm sorry, stitch length down to under one. Stitch width is zero. Um, so then once we have this stitch with this and this, we are going to come back over here. Now we're ready to stitch these lines. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna do three stitch, three lines at the same time, which makes it thick enough to look like it's hand 
um, embroidered. Obviously, if you look really close, it's not going to. But it is a stitch that goes backwards, forwards, backwards. So you don't want to start right at the end. You want to start a little bit in. And if you need to reverse stitch it, you can. Um, I always put it on the end, and then I'm like, oh, i got to rip out that last couple stitches because they went too far. All right, so here we go. You see, that didn't start where I wanted it to, so I'm going to reverse stitch to where I want it. And then I'll show you here when I get it done. But this is why you want to draw your lines when it's on a flat surface and you can use a ruler and a marking pencil. Um, and I recommend marking it with something that can be erased or ironed out because if you miss your line and you do it with a permanent pen, you're going to have a permanent line. So do use something that can be removed from your quilt. So let me show you this. There it is. And it looks like it's hand stitched. Now you could probably make that a little bit longer, the stitch length a little longer, and it would look like a blanket stitch. Um, but I like the density of the smaller, shorter stitch. So we're just going to do that for all of our lines, and then our fusing and stitching for the applique will be all done. And then we can move on to working on the borders. So let's finish this up here, and we'll be ready to move on. And then I'm just going to rotate it and stitch up and down, up and down, and then I can clip the threads in between versus having to start it and stop it every time. So what I'm going to do is um, every couple I'm going to go all the way up to the top rim and some will go into the inside rim. It is totally up to you how you want to do your lines, um, but this is so it looks like they're in the back of the balloon and in the front. And sewing a straight line is the same as drawing a straight line. If you just look where you're going versus where you're sewing, so I'm not looking here, I'm looking up here, you will end up with a straighter line. stitched. Now this is where a nice little pair of sharp scissors like what I have here are handy because I got to go through and I got to snip these little connector threads and get rid of them so that we don't have them sitting there. They're the easiest thing to forget and they will always pop up later when you don't really want them to. Okay so there is our hot air balloon with all of its strings. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have make sure you like and subscribe below. You can find The Whimsical Workshop on our website thewhimsicalworkshop.com and that has all links to all of our other social media platforms. Thanks for joining us.